one act fool, Penn and Teller. Do I hear two? Let's meet our next potential fooler. I'm Michael Kent from Columbus, Ohio. I do a stand-up comedy magic show. My show's really high energy, but I'm sort of a smart ass. Can I say that? I think of it as like the magical embodiment of a smirk. When I was young, I was fascinated by magic. But drumming was my main thing. I think that learning to play the drums as a child has really helped me learn magic. You're teaching yourself how to learn on your own. I'm performing a trick with a bottle of alcohol. I know that Penn and Teller aren't big drinkers, so I hope they'll be able to look past that and enjoy it nonetheless. Please welcome the comedy magic of Michael Kent. Would you like to see something amazing? Say yeah. 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 Oh, good. This is the thing with a bottle and a glass. And the idea is to get the bottle and the glass to switch places. I'm going to do that using nothing but these two red tubes. <laughs> I, I can still do it. It's OK. Nothing but these two red tubes. You cover the bottle, you cover the glass. On the count of three, one, two, three. Nothing happens. <laughs> Unless you're cross-eyed, that was awesome. It didn't work because I didn't say the magic words. The magic words are change. Help me out. Change. Louder. Change. I feel like Obama. <laughs> Let's see if it worked. <gasps> the bottle is now here. <laughs> the glass is now here. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting them to go back to where they were. <laughs> I need different magic words for that. Let's say, uh, Make them go back. Make them go back. Let's see if it worked. What? You did it. You did it. Sometimes I can actually do this. I love that sound. <laughs> Let's do it again. Remember, tube number one covers the bottle. <laughs> tube number two. Oh, sorry. My bad. Sorry. Sorry. Tube number two covers the glass. That's a bottle. That's a glass. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Tube number one covers the bottle. Tube number two. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Tube number two covers the glass. That's a bottle. That's a glass. We'll do it one more time using only one tube. If you cover the glass, that becomes a bottle. If you cover the bottle, that becomes a glass. That means an extra bottle. You put it right here. You don't let people see it. If you cover the glass, that becomes a bottle. If you cover the bottle, that becomes a glass. That means an extra bottle. That means you got to put it away. Sometimes when I do this, I don't use any glasses. If you don't use any glasses, of course, you need to use two bottles with an extra bottle. I don't know why, but it fits with the theme of what I'm doing here. There's another one here, but if there's one here, there's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's a glass here. There's a bottle here. There's a bottle there. And that's the trick. I was very popular in college. I That's... would say so. <laughs> now, um, you told me a story backstage about when you were doing a trick and, uh, and somebody wasn't the... a very good audience <laughs> the member. The strangest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was bitten. And so it, you it never expect to be. No, it was a grown human woman person. The woman really wanted to see the coin that was in my hand, and it wasn't time for that. And so I pulled the, the hand behind my back. The next thing I felt, she ran around me and bit my hand. Weird. I mean, have you ever been bitten acting? Uh, well, I was on a show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> so, but, uh, I'm not, you know, I, it was scripted. That makes sense, yeah. I think that, I did some biting, yeah. so it was, it was so all right. Everything hard, was easy. It was good. On a happier note, what's your dream, you know, sort of venue? Being live on stage at the Rio All Suites and Hotel and Casino. In front of Penn and Teller. Good answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, then let's not make you wait any longer. Okay. Let's go to your heroes. Sure. Penn Teller. Uh, well, you know, this is, this is a take on a, on, a, on a classic from the 19th century called Passe Passe Bottles, although he's, got a, he's doing a later version of that. But I want to really address something important here, which is. There's this view that lay people have, and I think even some magicians have, that, that real technical skill, sleight of hand skill, is cards or coins, small stuff you manipulate, and you can palm, you can do all this. With apparatus magic, they often think that the, that the props are doing the trick. 
I want people to know how hard this is to do. It's a really hard thing to handle. The speed that you do that, the clarity, the cleanness, not only of your, obviously you're funny, but everybody knows that. And obviously you're likable, everybody knows that. What they may not know is just handling those props. If you told somebody, here are the props, here's how it's done, here are the secrets, they would still stumble through it for months. And you just have a beautiful presentation. You not only have bottles, you have too many bottles. And you know, I can see the label from here. It's from the Brook Winery, isn't it? Uh, no, it's... I, I think uh, Ken Brook made, made all that wine. Yeah, didn't? yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Ken Brook did make some of the wine, yes. Yeah, yeah he yeah. does, yeah. But it's a, it's a great routine. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so are you convinced they know how you did everything uh, I, and that you didn't fool them? I did not fool Penn and Teller. Oh, well, you <laughs> certainly impressed them and us as well. Thank you so much. Michael Penn, ladies and gentlemen. Good, good, good. Thank you. We're going to take a break, but we'll be right back with more magic, including a performance by the legendary Penn and Teller. Stay close.